What is your name? My name is Steve Wood. I'm Cree. I'm from a community called Sad Lake, which is out by St. Paul, Alberta. I teach at Ermanskin Junior Senior High School. I've been in education for about 24 years. Please describe your program. Oh, okay. Well, I teach uh, basically, it, it focuses basically on language, an understanding of language and some some uh, uh, communication skills with the language, as well as Cree culture, things like legends, learning uh, some of the cultural teachings that we have, such as what we call mataiga, uh, cleaning of hides, preparing hides, uh, making drums, rattles, etc. Uh, just those types of cultural teaching, some survival skills as well. Can you tell me about your drum group? Okay, well, here, like, uh, we decided to start a traditional singing group. And, like, we, we usually have practices uh, at lunchtime. Uh, it's, it's one of the extracurricular activities where we don't announce. We just pull out the drum and people come to the classroom and they'll come and sing. Other, other students will come around and just sit around and listen, things like that. And then uh, as, a, as a spring off to the uh, singing group, we, we started a dance troupe. The goal of that was just to go out to other schools, other organizations, and sort of educate them about song, uh, song and dance, and through song and dance to educate them a little bit about First Nations people. Do you have an age group? No, we're, we're open to, as long as you're registered here in the school, uh, the school's from grade 7 to grade 12. Uh, anyone's eligible to come on out, yeah. Awesome. And, 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 and meeting your requirements in terms of like education here at the school, then, then you're able to accompany the, the uh, troop to uh, various destinations. Last week we went to a uh, school in the uh, city, a junior high school with 500 students to put on a performance. I've choreographed the presentation so like it not only entertains the audience, it also it also educates them. The viewer actually understands what they're seeing. In your opinion, what makes it an example of excellence in Indigenous education? Well, I believe that uh, it, that is Indigenous education. You know how you have like music in uh, mainstream schools, and perhaps even some some uh, dance classes, etc. Uh, well, it's not unlike that. The, this is our our music. It originates with us. And, and these dances also originated with us, so I believe that, that it is a uh, form of educating our young people about some of our own history. Do you have any measures of success in your program? Oh, no, I, 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 don't, I don't say, like, you're, you're the best or you're really good at it. Within our dances and our singing, we do have, like, uh, competitiveness. We, we have, like, in our power circle competitions. Uh, and the singing has been elevated to the to the point where you can you can reach out now to to actually be a uh, a recognized individual in the music industry. I mean, there is a place to get to with this type of of singing. That things like the Grammy Award, so there is recognition to singing. Now the dances are also competitive in in the power circle. The dancers have to be in extremely good shape. Uh, it's, it's not unlike any other sporting event or activity. can't just throw on an outfit and think that you're going to get out there and, and be able to move to that music if you're not in uh, fairly good condition. You're, you're probably going to struggle a lot. From your perspective, what is Indigenous education? Indigenous education is education uh, that is derived from Indigenous knowledge that is taught by Indigenous people and that, is, uh, that has a, a, a firm understanding and uh, is rooted in the deep history of uh, First Nations people on this land. Uh, that's what it is. Uh, you know, I, I think learning about those things are important, such as taking the kids out into the wilderness and, and teaching them about, about the different plants, because we have plants that can, that can actually heal you. That, uh, for instance, let's take uh, uh, an antihistamine that you buy in a store. It's, uh, it's in a pill, pill form. You can actually find an antihistamine that's a, that's a root that you don't have to ingest. And it will actually clean out your sinuses and give you a very good night's sleep. And 
probably not have the same side effects as uh, taking a uh, ingesting a pill. So those things are important, I think, to, to teach the people, and also like teaching the kids about finding like sweet grass, sage. You can actually live off the land, you know. If uh, you know, and there might there may come a time that you might have to live off the land, and I think those those skills are important. And, and again, like teaching the kids about about our history, which is not taught in mainstream education. I'm not talking about the history from 1867 on, or even from 1492 on. It's actually a much uh, more rooted history than that. And those dates are significant. Uh, if you know, if you don't know what 1867 is, that would be Confederation, and 1492 is well when that fellow lost his way and ended up over here. And telling the truths about those, which uh, would be very important. And I, I know the uh, settlers have had such a great history on this land building, as they call it, this nation. But I think like the First Nations people had a big hand in it, but those things aren't really told. And I think if those if, if uh, people were educated about those factors and and say uh, mainstream education, North American history, if you will, or, or uh, Canadian history, I think there would be a much more better understanding uh, between First Nations people and all other Canadians or North American people. Right now, because like those things have not been taught, there's this understanding uh, that there's a dependency from one group to the other, which is not true. Because if, if the uh, treaties were taught in the school and people had a firm understanding, they'd begin to wonder about who was actually on welfare from who. And so what is your vision for Indigenous education over the next 10 years? Well, I, I hope within our education, we want to be able to, to, to teach our young people about being competitive in the mainstream environment, of course. So you want to you wanna be giving them a mathematics, sciences, also a little bit of English because of the uh, worldly language, I guess. Um, aside from those, you want to be able to teach the children about their own history, about their own culture, and very important, their language. Without the language, we probably cease to exist as First Nations people. It's the root of of, of everything that we are. The language is, is, uh, is part of the very fabric of our culture and I often wonder if no one can speak our language, how do we perform our ceremonies? Will somebody be up there talking in English? I mean, an example of that is lifting the pipe. Will it be like, I'm going to point the pipe to the south over here? That just doesn't have the same impact as, as, as saying it in Cree. Our language is very descriptive. It, it's tied right into the environment. And I think like it's really, really imperative that, that uh, we instill our language in our young people. And, and it's, not, it's not really the parents or the grandparents' fault that the young people can't speak the language. We've had historical trauma. I mean, people are people that have had historical trauma. You can't expect them to to recover from it over a short period period of time. I mean, heck, the last residential school was closed in the 1990s. That wasn't all that long ago. And if people think like you know, that, you know, just get over it, I would ask them, what about the Jewish people? Are people telling them to get over it? And that was an understanding of what happened to them happened to them like about 40 years ago uh, and you, you look at the time frame you know it's 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 unreal to ask them like you know get over it so and that's the same thing with the first nations people i think like you know with indigenous education when we start understanding our young people start understanding about who they are and they have a, a rich um, and diverse culture they start to embrace it and with that that will make our our community stronger and probably more viable in the, uh, within the, uh, the nation, uh, you know, the Canadian nation, if you will. I don't know if it's really a nation. I just, 
the Canadian state. I'm sorry, for, sorry about that. Uh, I, I think it probably it, it would probably help because when I look at it, when I look at uh, what kind of culture does Canada have? It doesn't have any. Actually, when you put forward, they're taking bits and pieces of First Nations culture to represent that, right? And when I ask people like, what's the national language of Canada? Most people are going to say English. But I thought that came from England, and that was England, England's national language. And they'll say French, but didn't that come from France? And is that not France's national language too? You know, so I think like, for us, like, um, it's imperative that we teach those teachings and our language, our culture to our young people. Un unlike anybody else in Canada, we don't have a place to go back and get it. I believe that every other person who is non-native to this land, they may be born here, but their ancestry or they're German, or, or they could be Russian, or they could be uh, Chinese, or they could be, like my friend here, he's from Zimbabwe. He understands that he, he has a place that he can go pick up his culture and his language. We don't, this is it. And we have to make sure that we instill those things. Uh, that's a very important component of uh, indigenous education. I also think with some of the things that, in terms of Indigenous education that we have, I think we have some good things that we can share with the rest of Canadian society. What information, materials, resources do you need to achieve that vision aside from funding? I think we need, uh, we need a, lot of, a lot more interaction uh, with, our, with our elders because we don't have books to go back. Uh, I mean, uh, our, our strongest resource is our elders that are still alive and that still have a grasp of language and culture and, and our history. Those people are, are really important. I don't think you can go find a lot of this in a textbook. And uh, I think that's really important. That's our, that's our strongest resource. I'm a little leery about sharing information as, as some of our people are because people tend to take the information and then write it down as their own. And then they, what they do is they sell it back to the public. And they don't only sell it back to the public, they sell it back to us, which doesn't make sense to me. Like, you know. So I'm, I'm always a little bit leery, of, and other people are as well, sharing too much. They say, uh, don't tell them too much. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, right? It's, uh, it's, there's a catch-22 there, because if you don't tell other people, and uh, then there's no, uh, no knowledge of it. Another thing is if you tell too much to other people and they start to, you know, and, and then they, be, I mean, it, it's happening in, in, in education right now, because right now, like most education systems are trying to indigenize their curriculum. So they're, they're asking people to come in and what happens is uh, somebody with a paper from the, uh, the uh, post-secondary institution, and they're not even First Nation, but they'll, they'll come in and they'll say, I have, a, I have a knowledge of this, and I can prove it because it's on paper right here. But they really don't have a, an understanding because like, you know, I have a, I have a knowledge of, of um, again, like uh, Germany, but I couldn't go into their country and say, hey, I can teach you about all that. How could you teach people that, you know, uh, about who they are when you didn't grow up in that kind of environment? And I, I believe that we have to be careful of that because that might not be the right way to go. If you want really, if you want to really indigenize a curriculum, then you probably need an indigenous person that has not just an understanding, but is deeply rooted in that culture and in, and in that identity to help along to, to probably put it, not to make mistakes, is what I'm going to say.